I am a writer-director. The hard truth is that everybody who makes movies is actually a producer, whether they want to be or not. Like, you've got to figure out, like, I, I want my job to just be all day long writer-director, but really my job is, <laughs> turns out to be producer all the time. How do we get the, the funds to make the movie, and then once we're making the movie, how do we not spend more than we have to make the movie, and then um, how do we finish this, how do we make this efficient, and then even how do we make any money back on this movie. Or so, so I say writer-director, but I'm really, like all filmmakers, I'm just a, I'm a producer. I really do enjoy the producing on the other end, like how do we take this film that we love and that we made, and how do we get it to more people, like how do we make it so people can see it. I think that's really fun, and that may just be because my father was an entrepreneur, is an entrepreneur, and I'm an entrepreneur too. Like, I kind of see all this film stuff as, um, you know, it's like a business. It's like a, it's like we're we're a startup business, and we're entrepreneurs, and we're we're making these things we love for people, and we think that people will really like them, and we're trying to just get them to the people and convince people that they'll really like them. I like post a lot. I like the edit because, although I'm impatient throughout the edit, but when, when you get a scene put together and it kind of works and you call in your friends or your spouse and say, hey, hey, well, look at this, look at this, look at this, it works, you know, that's, that's thrilling. When, when you can make an edit work, um, and we say this a lot while we're editing, oh my gosh, this looks like a movie. You know, that <laughs> moment where you're watching it and it kind of works, I think that's great. I love working I think I'm also a frustrated musician, like I wish I'd learned to play an instrument or been in a band. So I like working with musicians at the end of the process, scoring the movie. Um, I like that a lot too. Um, I'm not crazy about watching the movie after it's done. I mean, I, I like maybe watching it a couple times with an audience, but I don't watch a lot of movies more than once or twice. <laughs> and so I, I'm forced. I'm forced to watch my own like dozen, dozens of times and I just, sometimes I just get bored of it or like, oh, hurry up and get to that scene. I want to see that scene again. <laughs> so I'm not crazy about the screenings. I'm more about the process. So I think at a certain point I had an inkling that maybe film would be something that would let me do the things I like to do altogether. And then the more I tried it and the more I stepped out into it, more I was like this is this is great because this is this is my thing. I think I got lucky the thing that I thought I might like the most when I was like 12 or 13 it it actually turned out that it was the thing that I liked the most and was probably the best at doing. Well, you know, when I was late maybe 8th grade, 7th or 8th grade, that's when um everybody started getting video cameras and so I had a friend who had a video camera, and when we would, you know, spend the night at each other's houses, he would always bring it, and we'd just come up with just funny things, stupid things, just goofy things. We'd just stay up all night making things. Um, at that point, because I really liked it so much, me and another friend went in together and bought a Super 8 film camera, because we were going to be filmmakers, <laughs> so we needed to have a film camera. And at that point, those cameras were kind of going away, so you could pick them up pretty cheap. So we got a couple of those and we started actually shooting film and then splicing it and cutting it. But really my s stepping into film, um, you know, motion pictures really started when I was probably I think in fourth or fifth grade and ha took a summer course in darkroom photography. Um, when I was 16 though, when I was in high school, I got a lot of friends together for the summer and I made this movie called Ed the Movie. And it was like a sort of a, a, a spoof of a B-movie creature movie, and it was shot on Super 8 film. And that actually, I took it all the way through the process. It was about 35, 40 minutes long, and I did sound effects and music and really worked and worked and worked on that movie and uh, finished it and premiered it for all my friends. and. I really took it through the whole process instead of just making a little video and showing it to my parents or something. I made a film when I was in 1995, 94, 95. It was my first like full-on 16 millimeter 
you know, with a real film crew. I was 24 at the time. I wrote it, I directed it, I produced it, I acted in it. I hired a bunch, I raised money for it. I hired a bunch of people to be in it. Um, it, was, it was my film school. That's where I actually learned how films are made. And I hate that movie now. Like, uh, I just, I don't like, I like so little about that movie. It's not that I hate me or my effort in doing it. It's just, it was before, I wasn't ready to do what I was trying to do. I think it comes down to like, what is the thing in this that I'm, you know, what was the artist trying to do? Was he successful at doing it? Um, that question, you know, that criticism question, like, what were we trying to do with this? You know, in my film, Taken In, uh, what were we trying to do? I was trying to make a movie, one, like actually make a film in a short amount of time with very limited resources. Um, but ultimately, I was trying to earn a non sentimental reward at the end of the movie. You know, can I tell a story that lands at a place where you feel something, some kind of emotion that's just not sentiment and feeling for the sake of feeling? It, it has meaning and value to you. That film taken in lands there, and so I feel thrilled at the end of that movie. Um, I'm very proud of the way that movie comes together at the end. With our short film, Dobra Ochka, that we made last year for the Expecting Goodness Film Festival, I'm, I'm just, I'm still like, I watched that movie and I'm, I'm just so amazed and pleased with that movie that it was done with so, so little resources. It was just, it just, it was a moment where a lot of people just decided they wanted to make a movie together and it came together so beautifully. So every product, every project has something to be happy about and lots to work on. But um, with the exception of that one film, I, I'm, I'm really happy and proud. And, and to be fair, with the film that I don't show anybody, I'm still proud of, um, always, I'm proud of 24-year-old Chris for pulling that together and making that happen. That was really, that was really good for him. Um, it's just not good for a 42-year-old Chris. He, he just doesn't. <laughs> I'm so excited about the next movie we're making that we're going to shoot in the spring called Sweet and Awful. I'm like completely crushing on that movie right now. Like I think it's going to be hilarious and just great and I can't believe some of the people that we have been able to connect with and get to be in that movie like I'm just ecstatic about that so if you ad had to ask me which is my favorite it would be that one and it's, not, it's not been made yet so you know there's nothing to complain about sweet and awful with I think it's I think it's very hard to tell a story if you don't know what you think or believe about things. I, I, I don't, in fact, I, I think there's a, a strain of non-story that runs through a lot of film and a lot of uh, media that we have, that we experience right now. And I am not a fan of no story or anti-narrative or just Here's just something to just, you know, a tone poem or something. <laughs> um, so one big thing for me is that we tell a story. And the other thing to me is that I don't let my cynicism, just my, my wariness about life and people, and, and that I don't let that win. I, I feel like the films that I'm trying to make are films where Chris is trying as best he can to believe and not be a cynic. Because, you know, horrible, hard things happen in our lives. And I don't want to be angry. Um, that said, I cannot stand just pat, sweet, perfect answers. I think if there's anything I, I hope that people seeing my work take away from it is they see the artist behind it um, trying to put the world back together in a way that's um, hopeful instead of um, despairing. Um, another thing about the films um, that I make and work on is uh, something that I'm 
I hope is a theme or a motif or a recurring thing is um, the sense that they're handcrafted, that like the people that you really feel the hands of the creator in them. If that makes any sense, like I don't, you know, I hate going to see movies where I feel like everything I'm watching has been processed through some computer somewhere, even though literally all these things are processed through a computer. Um, I want you to feel so. I don't want to. I don't want to make perfect films. I want there to be rough edges. I'm, I'm, I'm realizing that right now um, I'm in the right place at the right time with the technology of film, with what the internet can do for me as far as distributing my work, connecting with other artists, with the fact that I am older now and I have stories to tell, not just passion to do this, like I actually have things to say and have learned just some things about management and leadership and just how people are so it makes me I think better at being a filmmaker I also like living in South Carolina because it's not that expensive to live here and you know my children uh, can go to schools that are nice you know public schools that are are good and and another thing is that not everybody in fact barely any of my friends that I hang out with are like filmmakers or artists, you know, they're just kind of quote unquote normal people or, um, you know, people who, you know, family and so all those things I like about South Carolina. What I don't like about living here and I think has affected me and influenced me in my career is that I, I want to make, I'm very ambitious for my work. I, I want to make really great films. I want to make things that are lasting and as good as anybody else is making in the world. And um, I want, I, I aspire to make films that everyone sees. Um, I want to work with the very best people in the world, like cinematographers, uh, sound technicians, um, editors, actors. You know, I want to, I want to be around the best people I can possibly you know, get to be around. And we don't have, this is not where that talent tends to congregate. Every once in a while somebody sort of pops up and rises up and um, people like me just go consume them. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're good and you're here. Work with me, you know. I think this is a great place to be a filmmaker if, if you know, if you have a plan, if you know what you're doing. If you're just if you're just kind of like I'm just going to be a filmmaker I'm going to make my films, and that's kind of the extent of your plan. Like I have a dream and I have passion, then I think places like South Carolina can you can get lost here. I really like people here. I really like people. I love like I fall in love with the actors and actresses all the time here. I'm just like oh my gosh that that actor that actress is the face of my story, and. There's nobody else in the world. There's no other human. There couldn't possibly be another human that I would want to be involved in this project. And they just happen to be a high school student in Greenville, South Carolina. How amazing is that? A lot of people talk about, you know, the local film community. And like, you know, the community of filmmakers and technicians and actors and designers, artists that are here. And I think that's kind of cool. I think that's interesting. But I think that's a phenomenon that happens in every community in the world right now because of technology. Um, I try to see my community um, as w without geography be or beyond geography. That's how I see my, my community of filmmakers. I'm more looking everywhere I can possibly look at in the world and trying to find people, storytellers, technicians, artists who seem like they, they would, we would get along, that we would be friends and collaborators. Like I don't, I'm not bound by geography. Maybe here's what it is. If you, if you exclusively, if you only can deal with the concrete around you, like everything you're ambitious for or everything you're working on is with people you can see and hear and touch, your best friends here. I think that can be problematic. I also think it can be problematic if you live behind your laptop for your whole life and just are talking to everybody across the world who thinks you're so fascinating. At some point, 
you have to marry those two worlds. I, I think that artists don't have enough, com I think artists have plenty of community with other artists. It's, it's, it's really easy if you're a filmmaker and artist to find another artist to go have a beer with or just to hang out with and live some life with. You know, actors, actors tend to clump together and be best friends and I think it's, I think it's more valuable, more useful for an artist, especially a film artist or a writer, to find ways to interact and live life with a bunch of people that aren't like you. Your, your approach to your education as a filmmaker has totally to do with you as a person. Like your personality, your life experience. If you, if you love people, and you love sort of the, and you're competitive, and you like business, and um, you have ideas, you think you have uh, a vision for what you want to accomplish, then I don't know why you would go to film school or like a certificate film studies program or anything. I think you need to get out and start doing what you're born to do and start making movies. If, however, you love films and you want to be a part of them, but you're not like the person who, you know, rounds up the gang and tells everybody what they're going to do, or you, you, your ideas aren't fully formed yet, maybe, or you're really terrified of some aspect of filmmaking, like, oh, cameras, that's like a big black toy, I don't know anything to do with that, or, you know, if you find something about it extremely intimidating or scary or like, I, I know the films I like, but I don't know why I like them, then some sort of film education is probably useful. It's very important you get good taste. And the only way you're going to get good taste is by watching like good movies. And by good movies, there I don't mean necessarily the films you like. I mean the films that people have for the past 50 to 100 years decided were the good movies. You have to see all of them, even the ones you don't like. You see at least one or two or three every week. That's your education. See these movies. Um, read about them. You know, if you see La Strada, you know, Fellini's La Strada, and you don't quite get it, or it's weird to you because it's in Italian or black and white or whatever, then read an essay. Go on the internet and find something about it. Why is it, why do people like this? If you're young, like if you're in your 20s and you just had this epiphany, I want to be a filmmaker. Well, I would, I would strongly recommend that what you do is you find good, talented people that you personally like and trust and spend as much time with them as possible. Like people that are filmmakers, spend time with them and just watch and observe and help. And don't get in a hurry. I have recently encountered some people that are like my age, like old people like me, they're like 40, and they've worked at some boring job for 20, 25 years, and they're just fed up with it, and they're like gonna quit and they got all this money saved up and they're going to actually do what they always wanted to do after they saw Raiders of the Lost Ark as a child. They're going to make films. And they have, you know, a family, <laughs> children. Um, and they do. They quit their job and they bet the farm and they, you know, they live the dream. And I think that is, for most people, a foolish thing to do. It's a dangerous thing to do. Because what they missed out on from seeing Raiders of the Lost Ark and then giving up the dream and doing something else and then becoming older, what they missed out on is all the experience and all the, the learning that happens to people that just kind of do the first thing that I say, you know, then the people that hung out with people and worked on little things and sort of, you know, so they just show up on the set the first day and they're going to be Steven Spielberg and they really don't have a clue about what's happening, what they're doing. If it's the thing you really want to do, if it's the thing you have to do, it, this sounds terrible, but you just, you will just figure it out. Like, you, you'll read a bunch of books, you'll ask a bunch of people for advice, they'll tell you a bunch of stuff, you'll read a bunch of stuff, but then you will just do it. You want to be a filmmaker? and you're from Spartanburg, South Carolina, and you're 25 years old, and this is your dream, man, you have every chance to do that. If you have a little bit of talent, even more. If you have the right mix of personality and just temperament as a human being, all the more. 
but you are going to have to put in 10, 15 years of just hard, hard, focused, and um, intensive work that will be working on other people's films and making short little crappy films you decide you don't like anymore and you know shooting a wedding here but not getting stuck shooting weddings and then shooting a commercial for somebody here but not getting stuck doing that I mean there's just years of grinding it out kind of work well the first thing I would say just about being a local filmmaker is let's just all agree that you no longer to, to have, the, for the first time in the history of film, the first time in a century, to make a movie, a short movie, a feature film, whatever, you don't have to have a tremendous amount of cash, nor do you have to be living in Los Angeles, California, or New York City. Finally, we all can make movies. You can live here in the upstate of South Carolina and make those movies that are going to put you on the map later. Um, so that's an exciting thing about being here. If you want to make big budget action movies like tentpole popcorn movies like superhero movies, it can be discouraging to be stuck with no budget in smaller markets because those movies are made in such a way that they're just, you know, technology driven and all this kind of stuff. I would say the things that you can do here though is you can learn to tell stories. Well in society we, we even now in our society no matter what the career or the pursuit is we're still not quite sure what we think about women who are willing to chase something and go after something and want something like, we can't decide if maybe they're too pushy. It's so easy to fall into this trap of thinking the woman that's really chasing and pushing and driving something is kind of a bitch. Or is just kind of a jerk or something. Like, why is she so pushy? And You can see a man behave the same way and people won't even blink about that. In fact, they'll admire it. Man, that guy really takes charge. So some of that is, is, I think, coming from women just not being comfortable being that person and other people in the world not being comfortable with women being that person. I also think that a lot of filmmaking is real gears and gear and toy related, like cameras and computers and storage and microphones, you know, like... <laughs> Guys are so stupid when they make movies. They're all showing off their stuff and they're unpacking crates and pulling up in trucks and pulling crap out and putting up C-stands and lights and everything. And most women I meet, and this is, this is just, this is a good thing. Most women are just not into the toys or not into the gear. They're like, whatever, what does the gear do? How do I tell my story? 